Our week-long journey down a Slava Creek ends tonight as News 5's Emily DeVoe and her team finally make it to Dog River. When they started this trip, they were dragging their kayaks through what looked like nothing more than a ditch over by Old Chell Road. Four days and nearly six miles later, though, the creek looks dramatically different. And Emily joins us now live from Dog River, the finish line of your week-long journey. That's right, Peter. This is where we finally get to take the kayaks out for the last time. But we started tonight's stretch where we left off yesterday by the litter trap in McVeigh. Now, here are all types of figures and official facts about the trap, but you never really know just how well it's working. So you talk to the people who live downstream of it, and that's exactly what we're going to do. The last leg of our journey starts right now. A Slava Creek, a once natural and flourishing body of water, now is choked by the trash thrown into it. Oh, plastic bag. Trash is such a problem for the creek. Probably from a wreck. Oh, another grocery cart. The city installed a half million dollar litter trap to help fix it. It's now picked up 457 yards of litter. So that's 450 yards of litter that is no longer in our waterways, which is a huge improvement. The trap is touted as the creek's biggest success story. It's a much smoother ride now. But the real test. This is the way to end the day at work. Will come from what we see downstream. Don't see any litter yet. But so far, it's more scenic than anything else. I think that's a cool tree to jump out of as a kid. From up here, you can see waterfront houses and docks. Spanish moss hanging out of the trees. Something we haven't seen until now. And paddling under I-10. This is kind of spooky. Means Aslava Creek is officially Dog River. The final connector to Mobile Bay. You see this island right in front of us? There's some wildlife on it. Oh, wow, I don't think I've ever been this close to a blue heron. We haven't seen much trash at all after paddling past the litter trap. A little frisbee, Mardi Gras throw. But then again, there hasn't been a heavy rainstorm recently. Oh, hello. That's why we wanted to stop and talk to the Rainer family, who lives on the water. Well, we noticed the litter trap seems to be working. Day to day, it helps. There's actually less litter than there used to be, you know, because it does catch a lot of it. But when you need it the most, it fills up and then it overflows. I believe that's Bolton Branch coming in. On top of that, Bolton Branch, which is another feeder creek that runs by the new McGowan Park Shopping Center, also empties into Dog River below the litter trap. The river is filling up. As a matter of fact, if you paddled oh, 15 feet right out there, just, just, just right there, it looks deep. Water's about this deep. And if you got down in it and started scooping, what you would be scooping up would be gooey mud from the silt. But as you start looking at it, it's full of grass, pine straw, and leaves. And that's all the stuff that gets washed down the river when the storm drains blow out. Despite all of that, good to see you. They say they wouldn't change where they live for the right. world. Enjoy that beautiful view as you're going down the river. And when we paddle away, it's easy to see why. Wow, it's beautiful. Thinking back on where we started, though. A drainage ditch by Dreamland Barbecue. Trashed and overlooked by just about all of us. Never gave it a second thought. It puts things in a new perspective. Well, I've been down in there. That's a living entity. You can't fully enjoy Mobile Bay or Sunset on Dog River without first reclaiming a Slava Creek. All week, week you've heard from me, but now it's time to meet the team. Next to me is Jim Johnson, and he's about to give us a live look from our drone video and of the beautiful sunset that we're watching now. And next to me, of course, is Brad, our fearless assignment editor, and Jason Garcia, our talented photographer on the end. And Hello. have had something really different to take away from this, I think. You know, it was interesting for me just being around and watching uh, this whole creek just having nature find a way, you know? There, there, there was all this life, all this plant life that was going on. There was fish in the first part of it, even right behind um, what Dreamland was Barbecue. Dreamland there, Barbecue, that's right. Deep. An inch deep of water. There's a, some of the creatures just, uh, we saw now. It wasn't just that there was life, it was the variety. You got a silhouette on yeah. your head. Water that barely covered your feet, you had minnows. Um, and Emily wouldn't include this in the story. She's so fearful of snakes. I so we had to get it in here. Uh, we did see that one right behind Walmart. Bees. Uh, 
um, variety of different variety types of insects. Of that found a way to live in what everybody. <laughs> and you caught that fish that just as that water, the, your line hit that water. That was so amazing. It happened so fast. I couldn't even get my camera on it fast I, enough. You know, I think he had the fish on the hook. Right. He made uh, yeah. the fish and, on and the he put it in the water. Yeah. So I, I was watching. <laughs> I was watching. And, and Jim, with our drone, got to give us such a really interesting perspective of the creek from up above. Jim, what were some of the things you noticed? You know, I, I was amazed at, uh, at, at, at how far up the creek there was actually navigable water. You know, I mean, I, I didn't think that you'd be able to kayak up as far, you know, as, as you uh, did. Absolutely, and I, I think for me, it was neat to see how the creek changed from day one. You know, we were walking through the muck, and day five, look, we're enjoying a beautiful sunset here on Donk River. Once we got in the, the water at government by the bus station, we kayaked the entire way. We did not have to get out from that point south, and I think that was right around three miles, mm -hmm. close to three miles. But did you guys get tired at all? Did, did we get it? tired? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes, we did. Definitely by the fourth day, we were pretty tired, and, and we could talk about this all night, and actually, if you join us after the newscast, the four of us, we're going to be on Facebook Live, Facebook? answering your questions, and if you guys want to learn more about our trip, or a couple of the other funny, scary moments that we didn't get to include, I hope you join us. Reporting live at Dog River Park with drone pilot Jim Johnson, assignment editor Brad Gunther, photojournalist Casey Garcia, I'm Emily DeVoe, News 5.